The seats are empty at the Ford Idaho Center Arena. It's been like this for over a month. Artists and shows travel to the Treasure Valley from all around the world, but that has come to a standstill. We're lucky that all of our concert events are looking to reschedule. Luther says refunds and rescheduling are different with each event. You know, the state and the city are doing a great job of getting us information, but there's so many questions out there. You know, with people coming in from Oregon, Washington, Canada, you know, their rules are much different than ours. So how do we get those all to meld together and come up with a, you know, a cohesive plan from both sides? Luther says he expects horse-related events to start mid-June. At the Morrison Center, planners are unsure when they will start shows again, but they remain optimistic. We're looking at, you know, what the, the landscape looks like and it changes often. So we've gotten very good at what we call pivoting. The Morrison Center and Extra Mile Arena, along with Boise State, are aggressively working through this together, learning from one another. It was economically challenging, not only for us, but for our labor force, for our uh, vendors, for ticketing. And in Garden City, a show hopes to go on. A lot of uncertainty rests behind these gates here at Expo Idaho. Planning the Western Idaho Fair takes about a year. Throw a pandemic into the mix, well, those plans will need to be changed. So we actually spoke with the director of the fair here over FaceTime, and he tells us that they're still working so that they can operate in August. This event is the highlight of so many people's lives um, because it affects so many people's lives. It, their primary goal is to have fun, but our primary goal is to make sure they have fun safely. Even though there are lots of pieces to it, organizers are hoping everything will line up. Because we're social people, we want to be together. And so I think that's something I'm really looking forward to is when we can all be back together, uh, celebrating together um, amazing shows or athletic events or whatever that is. I think people will be so ready for that um, that opportunity. In Boise, Krista McPeak, CBS 2 News. Election Day, but it looks a lot different than any we've seen before. You may have a few more hours to get your absentee ballot requested submit uh, request submitted and register to vote, but you still actually have time to vote until June 2nd. CBS 2's Haley Kramer talked to the Ada County Clerk about what you need to know about this unprecedented primary. Given the nature of this primary, what's on the ballot, you know, the president's not on there. We already had that primary. There's no governor on the ballot. Um, we really expected this to be a bit lower turnout. Ada County Clerk Phil McGrain says he believes the amount of attention given to the change from voting at the polls to all absentee voting has factored into that. We're well past any records we set. Uh, two years ago, when Governor Little was uh, won in the primary on the ballot, that was the previous record high. Uh, and we had issued 79,000 here in Ada County, and that's all forms of voting, including Election Day. Um, so far, as of this morning, we've issued over 116,000 just for this election. If you haven't requested a ballot, you must do it by 8 o'clock tonight and not a minute later. The best way today is to go to IdahoVotes.gov and use the online application. If for some reason you can't use the online application, don't worry, you can drop the form off at the Ada County Courthouse or the Elections Office. We have a drop box as well out in front of our office um, and we're manning the doors. So those are the best options. For some reason someone can't print off a form or anything, if they stop here at Elections Headquarters, we do have forms available so that people can get their requests in. They'll be processing the new requests tomorrow and mailing out the final ballots. If you come across any issues when you get your ballot, give them a call. We can easily look up someone's request to make sure we did get them the right ballot. I think for the most part we've seen we have been able to get those out and make sure we got everyone the correct ballot, um, but we can reissue them. The important thing to know, if you haven't received a ballot yet, there's time intentionally for us to be able to get the ballot to you, have time to vote and get it back to us by June 2nd. That's why we have that extra two weeks after Election Day. Mail-in ballots aren't new, but they are new to a lot of people. So if you're concerned about whether or not your ballot was received. One of the great things, if they visit IdahoVotes.gov, they can actually look up and see the status of their ballot. So they can see that we actually got it. President Trump on the Hill Tuesday with negotiations over a Phase 4 emergency aid package though many Republicans reluctant to spend even more than Congress already has. Republicans still want to pause. 
What planet are they on? The coronavirus isn't taking a pause. The job losses aren't taking a pause. President Trump, in the meantime, signed an executive order allowing his cabinet to waive, suspend, and eliminate regulations that he says will help stimulate the economy. I look at all of the great talent around this table. You'll have a right to do something that nobody would ever have thought you would have the right to do that. Like cutting red tape on road projects or relaxing enforcement of some traditional regulations on small businesses and nonprofits that are just trying to get by. Meanwhile, still uncertainty over how to safely reopen. Will outdoor dining, just allowed in Connecticut, help ease people back? But maybe they'll go back if it's outside only, waiters wearing a mask, waiters wearing gloves. And maybe a month from now, then they'll feel more comfortable about going inside. The administration arguing it can also be dangerous to shelter at home. By one estimate, the virus-induced recession will see an extra 65,000 deaths from suicide, drug overdose, alcohol abuse. Mammograms are down 87 percent. Colonoscopies are down 90 percent. Although also here on Capitol Hill today, the Federal Reserve Chairman testified that what Congress has done so far has been remarkably timely, but, quote, we need to step back and ask, is it enough? In Washington, I'm Scott Thuman.